A new study has just emerged in the United States. And guys, this is also completely relevant to Australians because this study shows even people with these crappy little solar systems are still saving enormous amounts of money. But if you were to get a new solar system now, like I just did, you can essentially wipe out your entire electricity bill, even with a big house. And guys, I have a, a not a huge house, but I've got a, a fairly big house, I've got kids, uh, my wife's home, you know, all the time, except when she's at the hospital. So our power bills should be huge, but they're not. And this study shows that all across the United States, people who have solar are saving approximately 50%. Their electricity bills are down by 50%, but even when they've taken out a loan to get their solar panels, they're still saving huge amounts of money every single year. And it shows you that in Australia, where solar is much cheaper than in America, you have to be absolutely insane not to get a, a solar system on your house. I was driving around today and I was looking, intentionally looking at different houses, thinking who has solar, who doesn't. So many houses don't have solar. It's not possible that 90% of homes here in Newcastle, where I live, um, are renters. I understand if a renter doesn't have a solar on their, on, their, on their roof, they can't control that. But everyone else, what are these people thinking? They're complaining about the cost of living. They're literally saying if the cost of living is terrible for us and the percentage of their income is huge. It's saying here that percentage of income, people's income is around 7.5% for electricity. Massive, highest it's ever been, right? They're doing, they're complaining and the answer is right in front of their faces and they're just pretending it's not there. What is wrong? That's like madness. It's like walking down the street, throwing a bunch of money in the air and saying, oh, I'm poor, I'm poor, it's not fair. Um, I blame the government or I blame whoever, I blame somebody. Hello, my friends, welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans, you're watching The Electric Viking. Guys, I'll be at the Melbourne EV show, the Melbourne Electric SUV show on the 10th of August, I'll be speaking there, giving a keynote speech. I would love to see you there and I'd love to inspire you about the future. The future is gonna be amazing. Yes, even though a lot of people are making a weird decision to make themselves pay electricity companies thousands of dollars every year and it makes no sense, there's a lot of people that are not doing that. There's a lot of people that are just saying, you know what? Yeah, it's time to get off our butts. It's time to install the solar and it's so easy to do it. Guys, it's, I didn't have to, <laughs> like, I understand people not doing it. If you had to go on your roof and build it all yourself and figure out how to make it all work, you don't have to do any of that. I mean, anyway, if you want to know which solar company I used, they're called Resync Solar. I'll put a link in the description. That link will give you actually, a, a Resync will give you a discount um, because we're now friends. But anyway, it doesn't give me anything just so you know, I'm not profiting from that. So you click on that link and you can check out uh, basically the company I use. And the reason I use them is because they've got the best reviews in Australia. Every single review that I've seen, I've read every review, there's thousands and yeah, every single one was just mind blowing. Anyway, a new study re released by the Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory revealed the impressive impact or the incredible impact of solar energy on reducing household energy costs in the United States. The Department of Energy defines energy burden as the percentage of gross household income spent on energy costs, including electricity, gas, and heating bills. When the energy burden is above 6% of a household's gross income, it is considered to be a high burden. After evaluating 500,000 solar adopters across the United States, the researchers found that the average energy burden for solar customers was 2.6%, meaning very small to the point of being almost insignificant. As a result, rooftop solar reduced the energy burden enormously for most of these consumers by more than 50%. But this study is a little bit skewed because even though it is, they looked at 500,000 solar adopters, that is not relevant to what it would be like for you now. Because about 450,000 of those, right, were using older solar systems where the efficiency of those systems was lower and they paid more for the systems because solar was more expensive when they had their system installed. So these figures are good, but they're not as good as what you would get now if you were to install solar today. Median solar customers also experienced $2,000 US in annual savings on their energy bills, according to the data collected from the study, and $700 in annual savings when accounting for any loan or lease payments. So if you've got a loan or a lease, you're still saving, even after paying that loan or lease, $700. So can you see what I mean? Even if you can't afford to get a solar system or you think you can't, you can get a loan or a lease 
and you still save yourself 700 US dollars a year. Why the freak would you not do that? It's like, it's madness not to not to do this. <laughs> I honestly, uh, anyway, policymakers at the federal and state level have begun to incorporate energy burden into equity goals and program evaluations, aiming to reduce energy burden below a level of 6% for lower income households in the United States. So that shows you they're trying to reduce energy burden to below 6%, right? for low household income earners, which means a huge, I mean, mean, literally hundreds of thousands of Americans are paying more than 6% of their gross household income is going through cost of electricity. But these people are in a position where they could help fix this problem themselves. Even if they can't afford a solar system, like I said, you can get a loan and you'll still save on an average of 700 US dollars every single year. By advocating for renewable energy sources, policymakers can help achieve this goal and save homeowners thousands of dollars annually. It's true that the government would be very much in their interest and their constituents' interest, as in the population's interest, to just let people know that this is possible. The study was published at an open access article in the Journal of Nature Communications. The researchers considered factors that contribute to energy burden, including income group, ownership structure, year of solar adoption, region, and heating fuel types. Switching to renewable energy such as solar power significantly slashes the cost of your total energy bill. After initial installation investment, Forbes estimates that solar energy users save between 25,000 US dollars and 33,000 US dollars over the lifetime of their solar system. 25,000 to 33,000 US dollars. Now the average cost of a solar system, that's US dollars. Here in Australia, the average cost of a solar system is, is actually only about five or 6,000 Australian dollars. That's around about $4,000. And it's gonna save Australians then on average, probably 40 to 50,000. Think about that. You're gonna save yourself probably around about 40 to $50,000 by installing a new solar system. So guys, based on that information, I actually had a solar system on my roof already, but it was small, not very good. I'm not, I mean, it was doing something, but it made more financial sense for me to get rid of that and put a newer one in and, well, put myself in a position where I don't have to pay for electricity, which is phenomenal. You can see I'm happy about that. I'm smiling about that. And hopefully you'll be smiling about that too. Hopefully you're in this position. And if you're not, you can be very soon. Thanks for watching.